crazy. Good morning all, how you doing? It's Paul here from Unusual Things. Nice crisp morning this morning. Nice October morning. Right, uh, today I'm back in East Finchley Cemetery. And this is one for the Crime Files today. And there's a few of you out there that like the Crime Files ones. Um, so I thought I'd do another one. This is quite a sad one really. Um, and it's regarding PC Keith Blakelock. Now, if you're my age or maybe 10 years younger, um, you know, early 20s, then uh, you will probably remember this case. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about it real soon. Now, I'm not going to go into too much actual depth about the case because I believe some of it's still ongoing. It's very long, it's very drawn out, um, and rightly so. You know, a police officer was killed, and um, you need to make sure if you're going to put people in custody, it's the right people, okay? So, um, I've just taken some snippets out of what I've read to give to you today. Okay, but you can go and research it. There's plenty of information there. Um, but as always, when I do these crime files ones, you know, there's a lot of sensitivity around these cases. And I do these, as always, completely impartial. I'm just telling you the story. You make your own mind up, you make your own judgments. And you go and have a look yourself if you're uh, interested in these types of things. But what I like to do is obviously visit the person that's passed away for whatever circumstances, whether they've been killed, murdered, accident, manslaughter, whatever. Um, that big old unit. That looks like one of the TVs I used to have when I worked for Radio Rentals back in the early 80s, late 80s. Um, yeah, so you make up your own, uh, make up your own mind on things. Keith Henry Blakelock, OGM. A London Metropolitan Police Constable was murdered on the 6th of October 1985 during Brighton in the Broadwater Farm housing estate in Tottenham, North London. The riot broke out after Cynthia Jarrett died of heart failure during a police search at her home and took place against backdrop of unrest in several English cities and a breakdown of relations between the police and some people in the black community. Keith Henry Blakelock was born on the 28th of June 1945 in Sunderland. He joined the Metropolitan Police on the 14th of November 1980 and was assigned to a response team in Hornsey before becoming a home beat officer in Muswell Hill, North London. At the time of his death he was married to Elizabeth Blakelock, later Johnson, with three sons, Mark, Kevin and Lee. Lee Blakelock, eight years old when his father died, became a police officer himself, joining Durham Constabulary in 2000. PC Blakelock had been assigned on the night of his death to Serial 502, a unit of 11 constables and one sergeant dispatched to protect firefighters who were themselves under attack. When the rioters forced the officers back, Blakelock stumbled and fell. Surrounded by a mob of around 50 people, he received over 40 injuries inflicted by machetes or similar weapons and was found with a six inch long knife in his neck. He was the third officer to be killed in a riot in the London area. The first occurred in 1833 when PC Robert Cully was stabbed to death in Cold Bar Fields riot. Monday the 13th of May 1833, found by the jury to be justifiable homicide. The second occurred in 1919 when Station Sergeant Thomas Green was struck with a metal bar in Epsom riot. Detectives came under enormous pressure to find those responsible faced with a lack of scientific evidence because of several hours. It had not been able to secure the crime scene. Police officers arrested 359 people, interviewed most of them without lawyers and laid charges based up on untaped confessions. Three adults and three youths were charged with the murder. The adults, Winston Silcott, Aineen Raygip and Mark Braithwaite, the Tottenham Three, were convicted in 1987. A widely supported campaign arose to overturn the convictions which were quashed in 1991, when scientific testing cased doubt on the authenticity of detectives' notes of an interview in which Silcott appeared to incriminate himself. 
Two detectives were charged in 1992 with perverting the cause of justice and were acquitted in 1994. Police reopened the murder inquiry in 1992 and again in 2003. Ten men were arrested in 2010 on suspicion of murder. And in 2013, one of them, Nicholas Jacobs, became the seventh person to be charged with Blakelock's murder. Based largely on evidence gathered during the 1992 inquiry, he was found not guilty in April 2014. Blakelock and the other constables of Serial 502 were awarded the Queen's Gallantry Medal for bravery in 1988. Their sergeant, Dave Pengley, who, armed only with a shield and truncheon, placed himself in front of the crowd in an effort to save Blakelock and another officer received the George Medal awarded for acts of bravery. Blakelock was buried in East Finchley Cemetery on the 11th of December 1985. His funeral service at St James's Church, Muswell Hill, conducted by the Reverend Michael Bunker, the Vicar of St James's, the Right Reverend Brian Masters, Bishop of Edmonton, and Archdean Robert Coogan. The church seating capacity had to be extended from 600 to 800 and a further 300 police officers in a nearby British Legion hall joined in by close circuit television. A public address system was installed to allow 500 people standing outside the church to hear the service. The Guardian described it as a miniature state occasion. A memorial for PC Blakelock commissioned by the Police Memorial Trust stands by the roundabout at Muswell Hill, North London, where he was a home beat officer. So there's all the information there on the murder of PC Keith Blakelock. Now, like I said, that is just touching on the surface. There is so much, so much to that case. So many court cases, so many appeals, so many wrongful convictions, so many bits and bobs to it. So if that's your cup of tea, go online and have a look. Like I say, I've just touched on the surface for you. Um, to give you an outline as to why um, I wanted to put it in the crime files today. And when I do the crime files ones, I obviously don't go into the full case. We'd be here a month for Sundays. I don't have the time for that and neither do you, okay? But at least if I give you the snippets and you're interested, you can go and do some research. It's your homework. I do enough homework, okay? So now we're gonna go and find the final resting place of Keith Blakelock. So I've just been having a look for it now, and I think I found it. In eternal memory of Keith Blakelock, born June 28, 1945, died October 6, 1985, the much loved husband of Elizabeth and the adored father of Mark, Kevin and Lee never more than a fort away. So there we have the final resting place of Keith Blakelock. Um, what can you say? Poor man, poor man. Caught up in civil unrest, it happens, you know, sadly, but it shouldn't happen. It shouldn't, bless you, bless bless you Keith, you know. He shouldn't have had to gone through that. And I was 13 when that happened. And I don't know why his, his murder just stuck with me when I was a kid. I just always felt sorry for any person that had to go through that. And it just really struck a chord with me for some reason. I don't know why. And he's, I've always remembered his name. I can never forget all his face. Um, and I shouldn't do. You know, the same as we don't when we hear these news stories and things that happen. Um, especially things like that, you know. Civil unrest is obviously a political issue, government issue, blah, 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 blah. I'm not getting into that. However, um, you know, as a man, he's doing his job. That's all it is. And I know that sometimes police do things wrong, but they, most of the time, do a lot of good things right. And we can't tar everyone with the same brush. You know, we have to, um, we, we need to keep an open mind on things in life. You know, just because a bad person does something to that person over there, it doesn't mean their whole family or their whole friends are involved or are like that. We, each individual thing that happens 
we have to remember that it's an individual thing for an individual reason. So um, yeah, I think that's why Keith's always stuck with me. There you go. Anyway, I just want to show you this. Look at that. That is crazy. It's absolutely humongous. Thomas Joseph Tate, born 1832, died 1909. That family must have had some pennies. Anyway, when I go, I'm gonna have me on top of one and go, I think I found it. Nah, not really. Anyway, from Finchley, East Finchley, um, on this beautiful crisp morning. Thank you, as always, for watching. Uh, thank you, as always, for getting involved. And thank you for your continued support. I will see you all on the next one. Take it easy, won't you? Ta-da. <laughs>